Hey, how's it going, guys? This is Steven from Steven Game TV, and welcome to your fifth G Develop tutorial. So today we're gonna take a look at behaviors and movements for our objects. So right now we're gonna jump straight away and click on the new game creation icon over here. Click on native for Windows or Linux games. Click on empty project over here and just create our new project, okay? We're gonna be greeted by the scene editor. Right click on your empty canvas. Click on insert a new object and double click on sprite. So we're gonna get taken into the sprite editor. Right now, I want you to have the same images that I do. I want to use an image that we both have so that you can relate to the tutorial. So to do that, you're gonna click on this icon up here, which is the resource library. And then you're gonna double click on racing over here. Then you're gonna select one of these cars. I'm gonna select the purple one for now. And close this. Uh, oh, excuse me. Select the purple one and drag and drop it into the images panel down here. It's gonna give you a small error depending on your version. You're just gonna delete this, and there you have it. You have a nice image. So if you close it by pressing the X button, sometimes it goofs up and uh, it changes the window. Sorry. You now have a pink car, a purple car, whichever color it shows on the screen okay now we want to add a behavior we want to add a movement to this car some sort of car movement or something like that so double click on your car and go down until you see behaviors and click on add behavior now everything is gonna be in gray and don't worry if everything is in gray okay that just means that the extension is not yet present inside of your game and it's gonna add it if you select one of these so this is pretty straightforward there are explanations on the right side of each uh, behavior okay so that you know what you need but I'm still gonna explain just some of these you can skip to the this part when I click this thing after if you don't want to hear the explanation before now I'm gonna explain them very quickly okay destroy one outside the screen means that the object gets destroyed when it is outside the screen obviously for example you have a player that shoots 1000 bullets you don't want the computer to keep all of those 1000 bullets in the memory if if ever it goes outside of the frame so you want to destroy those bullets draggable is allows you to drag things with the mouse light obstacle allows you to set something to cast shadows if you have a light engine path is to make uh, an object move on a predefined path like an enemy that walks around a path that you already programmed pathfinding is if you play league of legends or dota or any other uh games where you click and then your hero goes to that point that is how it is okay you click on a you click to create a path or you create a path uh, a custom path then it goes over there obstacle for pathfinding is when you play league of legends or dota again and there are trees in front of the character but the character has to go in front of that tree so it goes around the tree okay so the tree is the obstacle physics engine is when you want objects to have um, physically based movement platform is platform and platformer are two different things okay platformer is the movement that the character has uh, it's the movement where the player pla where the player can jump run around etc a platform is is the obstacle that the player st steps on okay because sometimes in platform games you can jump through a platform by jumping from the bottom of it or by stepping on the platform and pressing down air plus jump okay this stop down movement for eight directions is what we are gonna use right now it's pretty straightforward allows the object to move in eight directions just click on ok and it's gonna ask you if you want to use the extension click on yes 
right now you are gonna be greeted by this thing right here you're gonna have something new that pops up inside of your properties and it's the top down movement here you have a set of settings and these settings are what you use what you change to change the behavior of that movement acceleration how fast does it accelerate angle offset deceleration how fast does it decelerate how fast does it stop maximum speed is uh, the speed that you want to cap it rotate speed is the speed that it rotates to and I'm gonna explain what all of these three means later on but for now let's preview our game by clicking on the preview icon over here if you press the arrow keys on your keyboard such as right down left or up you can see that the movement is working fine and your object has movement so what does allow diagonals mean allow diagonals when that is checked you can press two buttons such as right and up to move in a diagonal direction or down and left to move like that down and right to move in a diagonal way default controls mean that you use the arrow keys to move your object this means that you do not have to program some custom input from the keyboard you do not have to program it anymore to receive input from a keyboard rotate object means that the object rotates according to the angle that you are facing in okay if you press up it's gonna rotate up if you press left it's gonna rotate left and there are some times where you want to uncheck rotate object you want to uncheck rotate object let's uncheck that you want to uncheck the rotate object property when you have a sprite sheet like this because if you have a sprite sheet for an RPG game like this by the way thanks to Dragon Epic 94 for this image for us to use in this tutorial if you have a sprite sheet like this you and you enable rotation it's gonna rotate your player as if it was sleeping sideways when you press right or left and then when you press down it's gonna rotate the character 180 degrees and it's gonna be outside upside down and that's not really what you need and what you want right now what you want when you have something like this is to just not rotate the object so the object does not rotate the object just moves but you're gonna set custom animations for each direction that is facing in and that's why you do not need to rotate the object in some cases okay so that is pretty much it for adding behaviors and movements to your objects i hope you got a good grasp of it and i hope you follow the next set of tutorials like if you like the video dislike if you dislike the video and tell me how it could get better subscribe if you want to you do not have to but it but it still helps and see you in the next set of tutorials thank you